Welcome to this deep dive. It seems like we've got quite the puzzle in front of us today. Story, bits and pieces, thank you notes, even a little peek at another book. And it's all connected to this thriller, The Boyfriend, right? Yeah, it all seems to be leading back to The Boyfriend. And, you know, at the heart of it, we've got Sydney and Tom, two pretty intriguing characters. I'm really interested to see how the author unravels their whole dynamic, especially with all the crazy stuff happening around them. Crazy stuff is putting it mildly. We're talking murder mysteries, secret pasts. Maybe even a dash of toxic romance. Who knows? I am so ready to jump into this. Let's dive in. All right. So we're starting right in the thick of things with Sydney present day, as the author puts it. She's single, 34, living that city life and, well, trying to navigate the wild world of online dating. I mean, that whole debacle with real Kevin. Oh, I felt that. That date said so much about Sydney, though, don't you think? I mean, you see her vulnerability, that hope for a real connection, but she's nobody's fool. And the way she handles Kevin, she knows her worth. Plus, that's where Mystery Man makes his grand entrance. Remember, he'll be important later, I bet. Talk about an entrance. He swoops in, saves the day. Very intriguing. The author definitely knows how to build suspense. Yeah. But then, things get real with Bonnie's murder. Suddenly, we're in full-on thriller territory. In Sydney's own dating life, especially that whole Dr. McCauty situation, well, it becomes a major point of interest for the police and, of course, for us, the readers. Totally. Every new guy she meets, you're immediately suspicious. And Sydney herself is a little wary of Dr. McCauty. I mean, she does have that strict no-touching policy on dates. And given her profession, I kind of wonder if she's got a sixth sense about people. Right. It makes you think, is she overly cautious because of her job, or are those alarm bells going off for a reason? She seems like a pretty straight shooter, you know, someone who's not afraid to call out BS. So when she senses those red flags, we should probably pay attention. Speaking of red flags, let's talk about Tom. The story takes us back to his teenage years. Small town, first love, Daisy. Seems innocent enough, but then there's that tension with Daisy's dad, the chief of police. Something just feels off. That tension is huge. It's like our first hint that things aren't as picture perfect as they seem, especially when you factor in Tom's dad. You've got the small town dynamic, everyone knows everyone, and then you toss in that power dynamic with the chief. You just know it's a recipe for trouble. Oh, absolutely. And Tom's dad. Let's be real. The guy's all about control, especially when it comes to women. The way he disrespects Daisy, the verbal abuse he throws at Tom, it just screams bad news. It's like the author's slowly turning up the heat, right? And then, boom, Tom kills his father. Now, the author's really good here. We don't know if it was an accident or intentional. It's this huge question mark hanging over everything. Right. On the one hand, you have Tom, a young guy stuck in a horrible situation, potentially acting in self-defense. But there's this other side, this lingering doubt. Is there something darker inside him? A capacity for violence that we haven't seen before. Exactly. And the fact that it still haunts him all these years later, it speaks volumes. You can tell he's carrying so much baggage, so much unresolved trauma. It adds a whole other layer to his character, don't you think? It's crazy how the author jumps between the past and present. Like you're trying to piece together Tom's past while also seeing how it affects him now. And this whole thing with Sydney, I mean, talk about a recipe for disaster. It really is masterful. You've got Tom carrying all this guilt and trauma, but then you throw in this undeniable attraction to Sydney, this desire for a fresh start. It creates this really interesting tension. Totally. Mm. And their paths just keep crossing. There's this undeniable chemistry between them, but then, mm. bam, those red flags start popping up. His whole evasive thing about his past, that burner phone. That burner phone. Classic thriller move right there. It makes you wonder if he's hiding something really bad. Or if it's just a big misunderstanding. I mean, are we talking innocent until proven guilty here? Or should Sydney be running for the hills? Right. It's like that feeling when you're really into someone, but something feels a little off. And Sydney's own history, I mean, she's got that connection to Jake, the detective. It just adds another layer to everything. Jake's an interesting one. He represents that more cautious side, you know. He's seen it all, and he's not quite sold on Tom. But is he being realistic? Or is his past clouding his judgment? It makes you think. It's like that classic battle, head versus heart. Who do you trust? Mm. And then just when you think you've got it all figured out, the scrunchie. Oh, the scrunchie. It's almost like a ticking time bomb, right? You see it mentioned earlier, and you know it's going to come back into play. And when it does, it changes everything. Finding Bonnie's scrunchie in Tom's apartment. <laughs> Talk about a game changer. It's like suddenly the impossible seems totally possible. Could Tom actually be involved in this? 
The author plays with your expectations brilliantly. You're ready to slap the guilty label on Tom and then pff, swerve. Turns out it wasn't Bonnie Scrunchy after all. It belonged to Brandy Healy, another girl from Tom's past, another murder victim. It's like, whoa, where do we even go from here? Seriously, the story just explodes. We're not talking about one murder anymore. This could be a pattern. And both victims tied to Tom. I mean, come on. Even I'm starting to have my doubts. And then there's Allison. Another missing person case. Another connection to Tom's past. It's like these echoes of darkness keep popping up around him. He can't outrun them. It's like his past is catching up to him no matter how hard he tries to outrun it. And poor Sydney. She's stuck right in the middle of this whole mess. I mean, honestly, at this point, it's like we're looking through a shattered mirror, right? Every piece seems completely out of place, and we just keep getting more questions than answers. And that's what makes it so gripping. You think you've figured it out, and then boom, another curveball. This time, it's Gretchen of all people. Right. Gretchen Sidney's own best friend. Turns out she's not so innocent after all. Poisoning her own boyfriend. I never saw that coming. It really makes you wonder about Gretchen, though. Was this darkness always there lurking beneath the surface? Or did her obsession with Tom push her over the edge? It's a scary thought how love can twist into something so destructive when it's fueled by possessiveness and fear. And the biggest bombshell of all Gretchen is Daisy Tom's childhood sweetheart. It completely changes how you see their entire history. The author was playing the long game there. All those seemingly insignificant details about Daisy, they suddenly click into place. It's like this whole other layer of the story was hiding in plain sight. A story about secrets and lies and the weight of the past. And to think Gretchen could be behind those other murders, Brandy and Allison. Just to protect Tom. It's terrifying how far she's willing to go. It's the manipulation that really gets me, you know? She's been pulling Tom's strings for years, using his guilt and his fears against him. Talk about a toxic relationship. It shows how easily someone can exploit your vulnerabilities even when they claim to love you. It's a good reminder that sometimes the people closest to you can be the most dangerous. The ones who know how to hurt you the most. And then that climax, Gretchen attacking Randy just because he got too close to the truth. It's like this explosion of all that pent-up rage and jealousy. She's not even trying to hide it anymore. And Tom choosing to go with her after everything. What does that tell you about their connection? It's heartbreaking, but it makes sense in a way. Their past runs so deep that even after seeing Gretchen's true colors, he's still drawn to her. He'd rather run away with her, live in the shadows, than face the music and potentially build a real life for himself. It speaks to the power of trauma and how it can bind you to people and places that are ultimately unhealthy. It's a bleak ending, for sure. But maybe it's the only ending that truly fits this story. We're left with this unsettling feeling, knowing that Gretchen's hold on Tom is stronger than ever, and wondering if he'll ever be free. Wow. We covered a lot of ground in this deep dive. We started with just a few scraps of information and somehow ended up unraveling this complex web of murder mystery and psychological thriller. It makes you think twice about the people we let into our lives and the secrets they might be hiding. We explored some pretty dark themes, too. Obsession, manipulation, the lasting effects of trauma. And that question of whether someone can ever truly escape their past, it's a lot to unpack. It certainly is. But that's the mark of a truly great story, isn't it? It stays with you long after you've finished reading. And in this case, it leaves us with even more questions than answers. If you're looking for a thriller that will keep you guessing until the very end, then The Boyfriend should be at the top of your list. Just be prepared for some twists and turns along the way. You might be surprised by what you discover. And what about you listeners? Have you read The Boyfriend? What did you think of the ending? Let us know. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Until next time, happy reading.